All right, hello. Welcome back to the eighth episode of Poly Plus Amore Equals Us. It's so crazy that we've been doing this for two months now. I know I said that last month, but like, it's still, it's still so weird to me that like, this is happening and we're doing this and yeah, here we are. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm still wrapping my whole mind around it. Um, so I have two announcements before we jump into this episode. The first one is my birthday is coming up. Woohoo! My, <laughs> my birthday is this Thursday, the 25th. I am turning 32. Oh my god, 31. I'm turning 31. Good god. Um, not 32 yet. Ugh. No, I'm turning 31. The my 30th year has been crazy. So basically, right last year at this time, we were all in lockdown. Like it was just starting. We had no idea what was happening. So like 10 days after we went into lockdown, I had my 30th birthday and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and now here we are a whole year later and we are slowly finally starting to open things up. But like, yeah, here I am turning 31 and I still feel like I can't really like do anything or celebrate. I mean, I can, but um, Mike and I are going on vacation next week. So that way we can celebrate my birthday, just the two of us together. Um, so that's going to be nice. But like you can bet I plan on having a huge party for when I do turn 32 because it's going to be like my 30th birthday plus two years. So anyway, that's my, that's my first announcement. My birthday is coming up. Yay. Um, my second announcement is about our live chat. So we said we were going to be doing these every, the first Monday of every month. So that puts us at April 5th, but Mike and I are going to be coming back from vacation that day. So we're going to push it back to Tuesday, April 6th. So we will be doing our first or our next live chat on Tuesday, April 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. I don't know what platform we are going to be using yet. Um, we're still trying to figure that out, but I do want it to be video. So you guys won't be on video, but we will, and you will be able to see us on video. I have an idea of which platform I'm going to use, but I haven't confirm that yet. But so anyway, this live chat, you will be able to see us on video when you're talking to us. We won't be able to see you, but you can see us. Um, so yeah, that's going to be this Tuesday, the 6th at, I said this Tuesday, it's going to be on a Tuesday, April 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Okay. One more time because I feel like I messed that up. <laughs> Tuesday, April 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. That is when our next live chat is going to be. Okay, now that I have those announcements out of the way, um, we're going to just get right into this episode. Today we are talking about, this is probably like the number one question that Mike and I get or like close to it. It's why get married? if you're going to be polyamorous or if you're going to have an open relationship or if you aren't going to be monogamous, what is the point in getting married? So yeah, that's what we are talking about today. So let's just hop right in. All right. Hello. Today we are talking about why get married if you're going to be polyamorous or have an open relationship or not be monogamous. What's the point in getting married? Well, there's quite a few reasons, so let's start with yeah. Mike. Yeah, I guess at first thought it might seem like there isn't really a point. Like if you're just gonna, you know, see other people. Yeah. It's like why, why like, you know, go through this 
this whole formality of getting married. Yeah. So for us, I mean, we'd share why, why we decided to get married. Yeah. And we're still maintaining our, an open relationship, a polyamorous, mm-hmm. non-monogamous relationship. So, I mean, the, the real reason is, is just like why anybody else gets married, really. Yeah. It's that we truly do love one another and we've, you know, committed to having a partnership for the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we, and that commitment involves, you know, kind of like what's traditionally stated in, in wedding vows, you know, mm-hmm. want to be there for one another and support one another, um, you know, through, through all ups and downs of life. Yeah. You know, whether if one of us is like, you know, having, you know, kind of down emotionally, physically or, or financially or anything of that sort, then, you know, the other one is committed to helping that other person out and, you know, I guess regain, regain their strength and their happiness. Um, and so that's, you know, I think that's, that is like the, the big commitment when you get married is, you know, you're not just going to like bail or, or like, you know, pursue a, a, an entirely different relationship and leave that person behind. Yeah. Like we are going to fight for one another, you know, when these difficulties do arise and, and we have, yeah. and, you know, I think, I think we're, we're in a good place. Um, because we have fought for one another yeah. up to this point, and you know, I think we're, we're definitely committed to doing so in the future too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that is the big reason: commitment, right? When you realize that you want to be with somebody for the rest of your life, even when it gets really hard, even when it's not so fun, <clears throat> that's that that's it. It's it's commitment, and. So that, that's our way of showing each other that, like, we are committed to each other. Even though we do want to be able to have relationships with other people, that the relationship that we have is our primary relationship. And it is the relationship that we will always put ahead of any other relationship. And now, it, if you do want to be polyamorous, then maybe you don't want to have a primary partner. And that's fine. And then maybe you don't ever get married. But in our case, we knew that even though we wanted to see other people, we still wanted to be primary partners. And we wanted to be committed to each other no matter what. So we got married. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's interesting because I guess there are different, you know, there there are different types of polyamorous relationships. Like for us, we have like the primary relationship and we're open to which you call them, like, the secondary relationships. Yeah. And, of course, you it's know... It's called, like, a relationship hierarchy. Yeah. 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 But, you know, as we meet other people, like, we have to be open and honest with them and tell them, like, hey, this is, you know, this is, like, the relationship that we're in and this is what, you know, we want and what we're looking for. Yeah. Because, like, if, you know, if, if we're, like, if we start seeing someone else and they're making the assumption that, like, hey, this could be my primary partner... No, that's not really fair for them. They're going to be disappointed when they realize at some point down the road that they're not your primary partner. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that that has to be just clearly communicated. Yeah. To all parties. But I think it, because we are married, it's pretty uh, <laughs> yeah, it it's is, pretty clear yeah. that it's pretty obvious. we are each other's <laughs> primary partners. And yeah. so anyone else who dates us is not going to be a primary partner. But, but that language also maybe doesn't feel so good because to be like, oh, you're a secondary partner. That like... Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like a side relationship. Yeah, and that doesn't feel good either. So I don't really love the languaging around that, but that's kind of what it is. So, but either way, but it's to be like, this is my primary relationship, but it doesn't mean that other relationships aren't important. But it does mean that if another relationship is interfering with our relationship or making it hard for our relationship to continue then then yeah I would choose our relationship over the other one and I think that's kind of the assumption with us being married yeah that's that has to be just understood it has to be clearly stated and understood yeah with you know other people we may be dating yeah but and I guess there's also like the time commitment too like Mm -hmm. it's you know, even though we're each other's primary partners, like we still may spend a little more time in the future with, you know, a secondary 
Yeah. Partner. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that, like, oh, like, you're just going to push them to the side and, like, they're not, it's, like, not an important relationship to you. It is an important relationship. Yeah. I guess there's just, yeah, they just have to understand that if, like, something goes bad, something, like, you know, not normal, um, an illness, or just there's some serious situation, that, yeah, this primary relationship will be the main focus. Yeah. But if things are going normal and, and smooth, then, you know, I can totally see both relationships flourishing and yeah. everybody being happy in those relationships. Yeah. I think that's, that's what our ultimate goal is. Yeah, exactly. And, <clears throat> and I think most people would understand that either way, like, if somebody, like you were saying, if somebody, like, gets sick or something, then, of course, it doesn't matter whether, whether they're your primary partner or not. If somebody you care about is sick, you want to be there for them. And so I think, like, that that kind of thing is all always understood for the most part. Yeah, I, still, I think it's important to talk about that because you don't know what assumptions that other person is making. Totally. Like, yeah, like, based on you know, common experience, that is the assumption that should be made, but yeah, I still think it's, it's important to, like, clearly define that if, you know, as you're, like, developing this relationship. Yeah. And they'll probably be asking those questions anyways. They want to figure out, you know, like, what exactly is, is your relationship with your wife and, you know, what's this thing that's developing. Yeah. Like they're going to they're gonna want to know, like, where they stand and totally what your feeling and thoughts are about them. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's going to want want to know that everyone wants to know where where they stand within a relationship yeah and especially as de- as feelings start to develop and get like stronger then then yeah that then that needs to become even more clear that's in any relationship right like when you're just dating someone in general and things start to get more serious what do you do you say are you seeing other people do we want to make this exclusive you know like it, that's the conversation is like where do I stand and where do we stand and so it's the same thing in 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 dating multiple people where where do I stand you know do you have other partners that maybe are I don't want to say more important because that's not true but like like do you have a primary partner and all that kind of stuff so it's again it's just finding out like where do I stand yeah within all of these relationships because Again, it's a very vulnerable thing, like we talked about in the last episode. Like that, that's very vulnerable to be like, Here, "Here's my heart. I'm going to give it to you now." But I, I want to make sure you're not just going to like toss it in the trash can, yeah. you know? So like, where do I stand? I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that's vital. That's important. Yeah. And we're also only human. <laughs> yeah. We only have limited time and energy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so to be able to understand who who's going to be getting like maybe the most time or or how how that time is being allocated. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, that I yeah, that just that needs to be figured out mm-hmm. as these relationships develop. Yes, that's that's yeah, that's that's a difficult part too. Yeah. But yeah. I guess getting back to the whole <laughs> Why get married? Yeah, we kind of got. If you're being polyamorous, so yeah, there's sidetracked. The, yeah, not really. No, I just kind of a deep tangent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so there's like obviously like the the love and like the commitment side. Yeah. And then there's also kind of the more practical side. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's like there there are so many benefits to getting married that like sometimes we don't really think about or we take for granted and I mean is it necessarily right I don't know but that's just kind of the way the world works right and that's kind of why like the LGBTQ community really fought to be able to get married because they want those same rights as well because there are so many like benefits to getting married within our society um taxes for one right (laughs) like now we can do we're we're married filing jointly and we get a tax break because of that you know um health insurance 
right? Like I am now on Mike's health insurance plan and it's way better than what I would have been getting, you know, like all of these like little perks. Um, when we, when we're flying, like just having the same last name when we are like flying places and stuff. I remember like my, it, it was when I was switching over my last name and like, like the, the ticket said Alpazar, but my driver's license said Honorado and they were like, oh, you're married. Oh, okay. And so it was like, they just, even though it, you know, it didn't match up. They were like, oh, okay. Like you have the same last name, you're married, whatever, go ahead. And just like things like that, that really favor or like sort of uh, push people to get married. Well, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? And it like almost incentivize. Incentivize, yeah. Yeah, incentivize like marriage, right? There, there are. There are all of these incentives to get married. That's just kind of the way our, our society works. And, and – so there is that too. If you know you want to be with somebody for the rest of your your life, even though you also want to be able to see other people, that could be one of the things that's going to make your life easier because otherwise like domestic partnership if if you're like I don't want to get married but I want to be with this person, if you want any of those kinds of perks, you have to wait like 7 years, I think, before domestic partnership will go through. And then again, you have to sort of prove that. And I think it's a lot harder than to just be like, here's my marriage certificate, bloop, you know? So, so those are things to think about too. And obviously that's not like the main reason why you should be getting married is for those perks, perks if you want to call it that. Yeah. But like, but those are, are things to think about or like, what about if, if, if you want to be with somebody and let's say you want to buy a house together, but you're not married and you don't have the same last name, that's going to make things like so much harder. Right. And so there's all of those kinds of things too, to think about when you're thinking about like, do I want to have a prim primary partner for the rest of my life? If I do, do I want to get married to them or not? Just all of these things to yeah. think about. They're they're fact they're practical factors. Yeah, I would say they're not for for us. They weren't incentives. They were more of just like side benefits. They're yeah, like practical side benefits. Like, yeah. Hey, we love each other. We want to be each other's primary partner for the rest of our lives. So like, yes, we want to like get married and then show our commitment to one another through that marriage. Yeah. But yes, these other, you know, more practical tax benefits and benefits of that sort like are yeah they are they're helpful yeah they're financially helpful and it's yeah there's a lot more convenience too yeah so yeah i mean it's not like we weren't just like you know weighing all these yeah that's these not the reason why we decided married. to be like hmm, should we get married it's like no we love each other like let's get married yeah but they are i think it's important to address because they are factors yeah exactly and that and that's <clears> what i mean if there's somebody out there listening that's like well, I want to be polyamorous. What would be the point in marrying my primary partner? Just thinking about all of that kind of stuff. Because it, 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 if you do want to have a primary partner, it might make your life easier down the road if, if you guys are married. That, that's just the way that like our society works. I don't think that's right. But that's the way it works. And so it is just something to consider. Or think yeah. about, and it's it is significant too. Yeah, the tax, the tax advantage, and the the health insurance. I mean, those health health insurance is such a big expense. Like that's yeah, they're both significant. Yeah, like financial advantages to have. Yeah, and also that's like to consider. yeah, and also like we were saying, if you like want to buy a house or you want to buy a car and like all that stuff, and like it just makes it easier to be like, well, this is the person that I'm, I'm married to. And yeah, you know, and you help co-sign loans if need be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's just all that a lot kind of financial stuff. benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, if you have a primary partner, but you don't ever get married, that's just something to think about, you know, that you just won't have those benefits and that's okay. You don't need them, but it's just like one of those like adulting things to consider yeah 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 but uh, of course it's definitely not like the main reason <laughs> yeah 
just yeah you don't want your marriage to be based on some sort of financial benefits that you can gain yeah exactly (laughs) like that's definitely not the reason to get married but just things to think about It, it was things that I I didn't really even think about until after we had gotten married you know and and yeah I just I didn't think about that and like oh so if if we hadn't been married and and going through and having all of these like other relationships like it just that was something I really didn't think about until afterwards like oh shit what happens if if somebody doesn't get married a lot of this stuff is going to be so much harder and I, because I was like oh this is easy like now that we're married ta da you know and yeah it wasn't until after the fact that I was like <laughs> yeah. oh. Yeah, I'm just thinking that's that's because I file the taxes. <laughs> well, no, I don't mean that. I, mean, I know, no. Yes, it is nice. Mike <laughs> files our taxes. I so, yeah, you never have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it or do anything. But then again, our taxes are very easy and very simple and straightforward. But yeah, that's not <laughs> that's time. not what I mean. I know. I'm just kidding. Because like your primary <laughs> partner might be like, I don't want to do the taxes, and then you've got to do them. So. <laughs> That's not what I mean. No, I know, I know. <laughs> but I was like, I mean, that's that's probably a reason you didn't think too much about it. No, I just didn't, I did. I did think about that. No, I mean, I just didn't think about yeah, like all of these other benefits mm-hmm. and how how that could impact somebody if they don't want to get married. You know, mm-hmm. just that. I, I I didn't think about that until after I was married. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Cause yeah, we just didn't really have to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but like we were saying, that shouldn't be <laughs> the main reason that you get married. The main reason is, is commitment. Commitment to the other person. And I actually think that... <clears throat> You know, we really have sort of like proven to each other how committed we really are even even before we got married, right? Because most people, if they had gone through what we have gone through, they probably would have broken up even if they did really love each other, right? And so I, I kind of think that the fact that we were willing to work through everything together and and get to a good place kind of already proved that, like, wow, we, we could get married and we could do this and, and we would be fine because like, look what, look what we went through and how we work together so well. So why can't we do that with everything in life? Yeah. Yeah. And when we got married, it, it just felt more like a formality because we had already gone through so much together and like proved our love and commitment to one another. Yeah. So it wasn't like, it was it didn't feel like, Ooh, like some big accomplishment. I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll just like put a title on this, yeah, thing that we've already been developing. We already have, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we we was, had, yeah, what? it was just, it just, it didn't feel like you know that it, it felt no different, yeah, after we got married from, from you know, the time period like let's say like the year before we got married. There yeah, there was no like big, for me. Pretty sure the same was for you. Yeah. You know, you didn't feel like, oh my God, we're married now. Yeah. It was more just, oh, cool, we're married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and part of that too is we we were living together already, which nowadays is, is fairly normal. People start living together before they're married. Um, I mean, not always, but I that's become so much more normal now. Um, so there was that, but we also started sharing finances before we got married. And that was some, that's something that most people do not do. Um, most people wait until they are married and then they start sharing finances. And, but we were, we were like, nope, been there, done that. So for us, it really was like a formality. We, we were already sharing everything. So we were like, we're really just like signing on the dotted line kind of a thing, but like nothing else in our life changed when I think for most people it's not until after they get married 
that they start sharing finances and, and that, that can be a big adjustment trying to work all of that out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. I mean, yeah, we had, we did go through a lot before we got married. Yeah. So yeah, there was a little cheating and, you know, trying to figure out like what kind of relationship we wanted. Yeah. And then there was, you know, you leaving your, your pretty well-paying job to pursue acting and, you know, we both knew that was going to be quite, a, you know, quite a big financial burden Yeah, on both of us. And yeah, I mean, we, we went through all of that and supported one another and, and got through it. So yeah, I think that's, that made our relationship a lot stronger. Yeah. Yeah. We did all that before even getting married. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's like also, you know, that's, that was our life at the time. Like that's what we wanted. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, we weren't trying to prove anything to anyone. This is like we were just pursuing what, what we wanted to pursue. Yeah, and the dreams we had. Yeah, and so we, yeah, we had already shown each other how committed we were, and so yeah, by the time we were re- we were actually getting married, it was like, I don't know. Yeah, it didn't seem like such. There was a, no like uncertainty or hesitation thing. or anything. It was just like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, it was like, like, let's just make it official at this yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's just throw a party with family. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and, and uh, but we still haven't even thrown the big party yet. Well, not yet, but... Yeah. I was like, cool, this is like, we'll get married. It gives us a reason to bring our family together and have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, that is something else that we've done a little bit differently. Um, for anyone listening who doesn't know... We, so I wanted to get married before I turned 30 again, right? We, I've talked about this a couple times now, like this weird, that expectation of like, oh, certain things have to happen in life by a certain age, right? So I had this like expectation or this like, like deadline in my mind. I really wanted to get married before I was 30, which who cares, right? I'm 30 now and I'm like, why did that matter? But, but it did. And so we had this conversation in 2017. No, it was the beginning of 2018. It was the beginning of 2018 because that is the year we got married. And so we were talking about it and we knew we wanted to get married. And I was like, well, I want to get married before I'm 30, which was in two years. Um, but Mike was like, we can't really afford to have this like giant wedding that you want. So we came up with this compromise. Well, at first Mike was like, let's get married in 2020. Thank God we didn't decide to do that. Right. (laughs) Cause look at what happened in 2020 and look at all these people who had to postpone their weddings or change their weddings or elope or whatever. And I'm sure it turned out fine for most people, but like, I'm just like, thank yeah. God we didn't decide to do that. Instead, I'm we, very fortunate. Yeah. Instead, we decided to do something a little bit different that I, I don't really know anyone who has done it this way. Actually, one of my friends did it this way, and that's what gave me the idea, but I don't really know anyone else who has done it that way. We decided to have just like a tiny wedding that year. So we were talking about this January of 2018 and then had our wedding in August of 2018. And we didn't even start the planning because I was still in school until after I finished school, which was in May. So really we started planning this wedding in June and then it was at the end of August, mid end of August. So, I mean, we planned it in just a few months. Um, But we decided to have a small wedding that was going to be like just our immediate family, just us, that's it, like super minimal. And then we would save and have a huge wedding for years after that, which now because of COVID and everything that happened in 2020, and I didn't really have a a job at that time, like a lot of people, um, we decided to push it back a year. So now it's we're going to be having our big wedding in 2023, but that's going to be our five year anniversary. So I don't know. I feel like it, it kind of is going to work out because I think that's going to be really sweet to have, you know, 
have our, our big wedding on like our five year anniversary because that that's that's a big number, you know. Yeah. Five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty, you know, like that. Yeah. So it's, I think I think it's gonna work out for the best, in that sense. But but yeah, so I mean, not only is our relationship a little bit different, the way we decided to get married and do things is a little bit different. And I, you know, honestly, I think I think I think it's great. I feel like in this time that we've been married, we've learned so much and our relationship has grown so much that I think the fact that we're going to have like the big, big wedding five years after actually being married, I think it's going to make it even more special because now we really, we really know what it means to be married. You know, like, like when you get married, I don't know, like it just what what it takes to really be married and stay married and have be that committed to each other like you have an idea right because you've been in a relationship but then like being together for this long it really changes things yeah i'm you know just, what I'm, I'm saying just like at, <laughs> at our big wedding you know like people like you know usually like older people get up and they give their their advice on like mm-hmm. you know what it takes to be married or like what they've learned being married, but yeah, it'd be kind of funny because we can just kind of, I guess we you know there's still advice yeah and like stories that are interesting to hear, but we can also talk about what we've learned in the five years of being married exactly. So we can kind of turn that around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's like when when people renew their vows, kind of a thing, but usually they've been together for like much longer, like 10, 20, 30 years. And they're renewing their vows and they talk about, well, here's what I learned. You know, it, it's kind of like that. I mean, essentially, that's what we're doing. We're renewing our vows. But because we didn't ever have, like, a big wedding, this is our our way of, of doing that. And, yeah, we will be renewing our vows. Um, but, yeah. And so I – but I, I actually really like that because it's just – yeah, we have learned so much about what it really means to be married and, and what it takes to make a marriage work. And we didn't know any of that when we got married, of course. You can't know until you've been through it. So Yeah, I also just think it, it was <clears throat> the situation that worked out best for us. Yeah. And I'm glad, you know, we decided to, to go this route. Yeah. Because, yeah, we could have had the big wedding, but we would have gone into, like, a crazy amount of debt, and it just wouldn't have been... Yeah. I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been fun, like, paying that down while you're still pursuing acting and, yeah, you know, not making as much money as you were, so it's... Yeah, or we could have had the big wedding, but our budget would have been so much less, and we wouldn't have been able to, like, invite as many people or, or do as much as yeah. we, like, actually really want to do. Yeah, exactly. We wouldn't have had the wedding that we wanted to have. Yeah. And even if we didn't have that and we had, like, something smaller, we'd still have to, you know, go into, like, a decent amount of debt. So it's like, why why force that? Yeah. There's two big reasons we don't want to have this wedding, but we still want to get married. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll have a small wedding with immediate family. And it's not going to break the bank. Yeah, it won't break the bank, but it'll still be, like, really nice and, and really intimate. Yeah. And we're getting married, which is what we want, ultimately. Yeah. And then we'll just, we'll throw a, you know, a bigger party essentially later yeah when money is not the issue and we can do it how we want so yeah it's exactly so it's a great compromise yeah and actually I really liked that <clears throat> our wedding was so intimate because I feel like the the one thing that most people say after their big big wedding is that like it went so fast they had barely any time to process it they didn't get to really spend that time with each other because when you when you're throwing a wedding you are the host of a party and anyone who has ever hosted a party you know it's about making sure your guests are having a good time and so like of course like I I I don't know I feel like people don't get to spend as much time together but like we did because it was just our family and so we got to spend so much time, like, together and really just enjoying, like, wow, we just got married versus, like, this huge party and you, you feel like you need to say hi to everybody and, and it goes so fast and, and you're taking all the photos and you're doing all the things and then all of a sudden the whole night is over and you're like, what just 
happened. You know, like so many people feel that way, but we, we didn't feel that way. And, and that was really nice. And like, we took pictures and everything and like it, but it was just the two of us and we got to like walk on the beach together and take the pictures and then, and then (laughs) afterwards and we did karaoke and with our families and it was just having it be intimate made it so much more special because we got to have these memories together. Yeah. It wasn't entirely overwhelming. Yeah. And, and so now when we do throw the big party, it'll be like, I mean, yes, of course we want to spend the time together, but it'll be okay to be like, let's be these like kick-ass hosts of this party. Yeah. Because I mean, we we're already married, like, and we already had the ceremony. We already had that really special moment together. And of course this is still a special moment, but like, you know, it, it's just different. Yeah. I'm not trying to cram... I don't know, an intimate, like, personal wedding with a giant party. Yeah. Which is just, like, completely opposites and contradict one another. Yeah. It's kind of nice, because, yeah, we broke them up into, like, two separate events. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, I just, I'm totally happy with how it, it all worked out and how it's working out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did it this way. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's not really, like, the, the conventional way to do it, but... Our marriage isn't conventional either, so. Just <laughs> <laughs> doing what works for us. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's just a little bit about, like, our actual wedding and how, how we are doing things because it is different. We weren't really planning on talking about it, but here we are. <laughs> now you know. I'm glad we yeah. did, though. <laughs> yeah. A little off topic, but. <laughs> uh, it's, it's along the same. Yeah. Line, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, plus also, like. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like most most girls, like, dream about their wedding. I actually didn't dream about my wedding when I was little. I always dreamed I would have a wedding. And I just like being the center of attention. So I always was like, I, yeah, of course I want a giant wedding. It, it's an excuse for everyone to pay attention to me. Hello. <laughs> but, like. <laughs> nice I, but, <laughs> but I never, I, it wasn't ever something I, like, really dreamed about as a kid. But I feel like a lot of women do and so like I don't know I I feel like that kind of does go along the lines of like why get married if if you want to have an open relationship still is like some people have just dreamt about having a wedding yeah and that's okay I mean that shouldn't be the only reason you know it should still be about the partnership but but I mean that is part of the reason too I was like I want to have a wedding you know? Yeah. I mean, these are all factors that yeah. you know, combine to, like, you know, give you the reason to have a wedding. Yeah. To get married. Yeah. All right. That is it for today. That concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, um, we certainly had a lot of fun as always. (laughs) Um, And so I just want to remind you that if you are enjoying the show to please rate and subscribe to this show. It really helps us subscribing. Just it, it um, makes the show more visible. Right now, if you type in polyamorous into like iTunes or Spotify to find our show it doesn't even pop up yet you have to type it in exactly poly plus more equals us and so it just helps with visibility the more people that we have subscribed the higher up it's going to be when people search for it um and so that's kind of the goal so it would mean a lot to us if you would subscribe to the show on whatever platform you like to listen on And then also rating the show. Rating the show also helps, um, you know, bring bring our show more visibility. So hopefully you give it a five-star rating, um, but be honest about it and, you know, leave a little review. Um, We do look at those and, and take them seriously. And so if you have any suggestions or, you know, anything you would like us to know about the show, like please 
please let us know there. Um, you can also reach out to me on Instagram. I'm pretty active on there. Uh, my handle is at underscore Alisa dot Janelle. Uh, that's also down in the show notes. Or you can send us an email at poly plus amore equals us, the number eight at gmail.com. And every week, I always get a few people who reach out to me that say they listen to the show for the first time or that they have been listening to the show. And and you tell me your stories about either like polyamory or ethical non-monogamy or about cheating or whatever it is. And it's so wonderful to hear from you and to know that, you know, this show is is reaching people and that and that you you are enjoying it and that this means something like what we are doing means something to other people. That's, that means the world to us. So please continue to reach out to me. I would love to talk to you. Yeah. All right. So that is it for this week. Um, happy birthday to me in a few days (laughs) and yeah, we'll see you next time. 